Uh, the Homes for Ukraine Refugees Scheme launched in the UK yesterday. This is a government-sponsored scheme that will offer each household uh, housing a refugee £350 a month. Yes, the website saw overwhelming traffic with 43,000, more than 43,000, signing up. In the first few hours, Housing and Community Secretary Michael Gove said the UK had a history of, quote, supporting the most vulnerable during their darkest hours and that there would be no limit on numbers. Well, here's tell us more is political commentator Stephen Carlton Woods. Thank you very, very much. Um, so, look, Stephen, I suppose, I mean, it's, it, there's been unprecedented demand to house a Ukrainian refugee, hasn't there? Yeah, um, you were interesting. You just said that figure forty three thousand. That was yesterday. I think today it's up to ninety thousand people have wow, signed up that's to house uh, Ukrainian refugees. So there's uh, a lot of support out there. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the three hundred and fifty pounds a month is obviously just a bit of a subsidy, isn't it? Essentially. Let's say what it is, which is that our government is asking people essentially out of the the kindness of their hearts to basically self fund a refugee, aren't they? Mm, yeah. And uh, if these people prepared to put their hand in the pocket and do that and go that extra mile, uh, I think uh, that's a sensible way to go. But, but isn't the, the yeah? Is it? I guess on this occasion, it's people that have demanded it. So it's not just that the government has shifted the responsibility. People wanted yeah. to do something, and people have offered up their homes as a sign of solidarity. Well, people feel a sense of need at the moment, and they need to help, and uh, and they're doing all sorts of things uh, to try and help the situation. We've seen people um, going over to uh, Ukraine to try and fight for their nation, even. Um, there's people taking driving ambulances to the border as we speak now to try and help with what's going on there. So uh, I think we have a sense of uh, needing to help in this country. We're raising some organisations that have been involved with were collecting money at the weekend to send uh, donations over to the Ukraine. There's a big effort with the uh, people of the UK here in uh, recognising the need and support for the Ukraine. Yeah, now talk to me a little bit about oil. Um, so obviously this has kind of opened a, a can of worms, essentially, what's been going on in Russia at the moment. And I think maybe has just decided to uh, increase the, the, the idea for national self-reliance a little bit more. Where do you stand on that? Well, it's, it, it's been obvious, and the, the Prime Minister spoke about that, that the, the West have been looking the other way for far too long and made a terrible error in heavily relying on fuel from places like Russia. Um, and we know that uh, the Prime Minister is going to see the Saudis today uh, to try and get them to increase their production. Well, I find that interesting in itself, in the way that they're going to Saudi rather than to the Americans. You'd think the Americans also are a massive oil-producing nation. Would they not upgrade uh, or up their production as well uh, to try and reduce the, uh, the price of oil? And at the moment, the Western world is still using Russian fuel. And with the prices being inflated, uh, it means that Russia are making money out of this at the moment. I know it's a, there's a time limit on this, but it's still a case where Russia are making out of this situation. Mm. Do you not think it's going to be very hard to justify to, let's say, a single mum, right? A single mum whose you know, fuel bills, energy bills, etc., are going absolutely through the roof. Unaffordable, right? That we are not using the resources right below our feet right now. Fracking, uh, shale gas. Well, you know, <laughs> how, how on earth? How on earth does Boris Johnson or, or anyone justify to someone who's absolutely skint and struggling to feed their kids that we no, are concre we are concreting over our own resources? But don't forget, fracking is a dirty word in some parts of the UK. We've seen over the years people I mean, down the road in uh, in Trafford, Stretford, uh, people were up in arms over the uh, uh, fracking situation there, and they closed. They were about to announce the closure of that area, uh, so I think that's up in up in the air at the moment, and they may be looking at reopening uh, that fracking site. But uh, it's very controversial subject with fracking. Um, yeah. But I think... Oh, look, look Stephen, uh, yeah. we, can, we can't get around the fact that the Western world's been led by the nose by a, a, a teenager from Sweden who, by definition, has rarely been to school. And all of a sudden now, we're in this mess. Anyway, Stephen Carlton, well, thank you very, very much. Yeah. Uh, oh, go on, yeah. crack on. Sorry, well, uh, this is another side of the coin, really, with the fact that uh, people were going for, you know, uh, zero carbon emissions and climate change and all that lot. But there's a cost to that. And now we're seeing, so on the tail end of that, uh, fuel prices are rising, 
uh, because we're trying to look towards green efficiencies and things. Um, and now we've got a, a, a war situation, which is putting the cost of fuel up again. And uh, the, who pays for it at the end of the day? The people who can't really afford it. That's an unfortunate situation. Yeah, exactly that. That's that, it. That Thank you very it. much. Stephen Carlton was there, of Thank course, you. political commentator. Cheers. Thank you very much. Always Thank a pleasure you. to have you on.